Hello and welcome guys to this week's edition of Well Met. I am the Mish King here and today I have with me the legendary guest known as Massan. Hello. Yeah. How, How are you doing, doing? Massan? I'm doing spectacular. Yeah. Uh, normally I actually give my guests like a really long-winded intro, but I actually completely spaced it. So I'm like, you know what? We're doing it live. So... Yeah. Uh, or, all right, really quickly, can you introduce yourself for all those people who might not know who you are? Sure. Um, I'm, well, player Masan mm -hmm. from Team Solomid. And, well, I've been streaming Hearthstone mainly, and that's how I got popular instead of being actually making a good result. And I had, I've been in esports in a while. I played the StarCraft professionally. For a little bit, then I decided to switch to Hearthstone because it was a game I liked better. Mm -hmm. All I right. guess that's about it, yeah. All right. Now moving on to the second question. This is a bit of a follow-up. It's a bit more about mm -hmm. a detailed gaming history, like how you got into video games and Ooh. card games in general. I actually have not played the any card Well, you know, oh. never mind. Because I, when I was ninth grade, I did play Yu-Gi-Oh for mm -hmm. three months, and then um, when I was in college, I was playing Mesh the Gathering draft only, and I never constructed along with my roommates. But so I, I touched the TCG here and there, but I never actually played a competitive level or full time before Hearthstone. All right, and uh, about video games in general, like what was your first video game? Ooh, I don't even remember the names. Uh, I just, you know those like 286 computers? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I, used to, I used to play video games on big floppy, like B, not not like the floppy disk, but yeah. the one bigger than that. Yeah, yeah. Just plugged it in and say play something something on DOS, and I used <laughs> to play those games. Wow. <laughs> when I was very, very young. Wow. So I don't even remember what the name of those games were at the moment, but I do remember that playing those. All right. Moving on to the next question, where did your nick come from? So I've been playing games since I was very young, as you can kind of tell from my first games. Mm -hmm. And because of that, when I made my nickname, I was like six. I don't exactly remember. I was probably nine years old because it's uh, when I actually first interacted with an online game. Um, it was a game called Kingdom of Wind, but because of that, I my name actually doesn't have any meaning. I know it probably means a bunch of different things in all the other language. It means like table in Turkish or something. Oh, wow. And it's a city in Korea, too, which I didn't intend when I made it. But it actually doesn't have any meaning All right. <laughs> behind it. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite class in Hearthstone? My favorite class is Arsh. Um... I don't have a single particular right. deck How about, I like. How uh, about top three? Top three, that's good. I like the Rogue Druid Shaman the All best. Right. All right, any particular reasoning? Or is it just like the um, mechanics suit you? So I... I basically like... I, I just stick with it. I, if I like a deck, I just stick with it and mm -hmm. I just try to explore as much as possible. And the first deck I saw was... a. Uh, at competitive level is when Tempo Rogue was very popular in Test Season 1 and 2. So I've been playing Rogue since Test Season 2, I think, actually. I don't remember playing competitive or constructed in Season 1. But Shaman, I actually got this off from Thai's time when he was rank 1 and A, and he was literally just playing again and again and again and, um, with a shaman, and he would just never lose his rank one status, despite him keep continuously playing the game because he had a, such a high win rate, and that's what it got me to shaman. So I started playing it afterward. Although shaman did fall off after a little while, and then after the hunter got rediscovered. Yeah. As for druid, it's just been very solid deck. I mean, ever since uh, Starcraft, I used to I just like solid decks. I don't like a gimmicky. Yeah. I don't like the gimmicky playing style. I always stuck with a macro. I always just stuck with a, something I can just fall back to. And Druid is one of those decks that where it doesn't really have a hardcore counter where, oh my god, I'm going against this, this <laughs> hero or yeah. deck, so I'm going to lose like 
90 percent of the time it doesn't have any of those so that's why i like it yes indeed all right uh what are your top five pros in the scene i know i'm asking all the hard uh, questions uh, today uh, man uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well first one has to go with the ties because he's the one who brought me to the, the any other hero besides the rogue that i had my eyes on Second one would be Amaz for beating, <laughs> <laughs> beating me at IM Shinchen at round of eight. Uh, top eight. Can I just Sorry, stop top at top five? Eight? Yeah, top five. All right. Oh, uh, you could stop at three even. Right. They don't necessarily need to be in order either. Oh, um, if that's the case, like the Thais, I guess, is the, one of the most strongest, stronger players out there. He has like eight main strike on the I Heart You King of the Hill right now. Um, RDU is definitely one that I want to watch on, both from also from MIM for his performance in IM as well as the Dreamax. Mm -hmm. yeah. And let's let's just stop there. All right, that's fair enough. I, 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 I will stick with the four. Yep. Uh, recently, of course, you were at the IEM sanction event. Um, mm -hmm. uh, how was the event itself? Wait, is that sanction or is that sanction? Uh, I just read it my, as a sanction. But... My pronunciation is terrible as well. So let's just say the recent IEM tournaments so right. that nobody gets angry so and this starts flaming. The operation itself was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen among in my career of esports over like five years so I had my foot on this field and their yeah the, 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 their treatment to players their environment was a great except the their communication was not the best especially with the Chinese venue so they had their internet cut off for a while as oh, well wow. as electricity because they didn't communicate well enough with the venue I think mm. like <laughs> So yeah, besides that, it was it was really really fabulous experience, and food was cheap there too. So mm -hmm. nice. All right, my follow up question is, um, of course, because you you were a former uh, StarCraft pro, you've attended uh, such tournaments as MLG. Uh, do you like the way that Hearthstone tournament scene is developing? I I do like it, like um, but I think there could be a little more open. A little more focus on open tournament to discover more players out there, because the player pool is quite limited. I think mm -hmm. for such popular game, um, and majority of the, the the tournaments are just doing invite only or like three fourth invite. If 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 I could push that to like two third invite to half invite, I would be very satisfied. Satisfied. But as far as where it's going, as far as the viewership goes, as far as um, with the recent Nexus patch, I do like the way the game is going. It's progressing. I just hope that they hurry up with the next patch a little bit more than they did with Nexus. Yeah, that was a little too slow. All right, moving on to a bit of a lighter question: uh, Which Hearthstone card best represents you? Ooh, best represent me, not which one I like the best. Mm. Best, I would say Leaper Gnome because I feel like you right now. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had the uh, the stream full day off because I was just sick for an entire day. I had a fever, and I think I'm fine, feeling feeling okay now, better now. But until until that moment, I was just a libernum all day, yep, all night. I'm spamming well played okay. right now. It's well played. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, with Nax Remus just released the other day, on a scale Ooh. of one mana to ten, how psyched are you? Like after experiencing it. Um, seven. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm psyched about how how much you can how much those how much change those only few cards brought into the game already, but I feel like I know how much those cards are gonna impact the game, except for those those cards that takes a huge risk and, and it's uh, hard to tell where they are exactly belong. But as far as all the basic cards, like everyone knows the the spectral knights can be really strong. Everyone knows uh, like some of the other cards are gonna be very gimmicky at the same time, quite strong. Like uh, what's that, Kaltuzas? I 
I think I don't remember how to pronounce his name. It's like eight, eight, eight mana, six, eight, and it brings back every single minion that died this turn, things like that. Well, on your field, I think. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty psyched. Um, although I already sent that. The only reason I gave seven is because I already sent all the cards already. Hmm. If I if they would release one or a couple more, like a Easter egg, I'll be yeah. very satisfied, actually. Yeah, that would be pretty sick, man. Uh, yeah. All right, uh, which I already asked, uh, like reels this last week. Uh, which classes do you think will benefit the most from uh, the next release? Ooh, uh, next week you said. Oh, no, I asked him. Uh, I asked him, like, well, let's just say that once next is completely released, which uh, classes do you think will come out on top? <sighs> Man, that's a really tough question. Mm. I think the Druid, actually. I, I used to think the Druid will come out on top because the Poison is used to think, um, gets rid of all the counters they used to have, which are Berker Rogue and somewhat and kind of Andalox. But with that said, I'm saying it based off of current meta, not in future meta, where a lot of Noxramas has that threat also, they're going to be more swarmy. Um, they're going to abuse those mechanics on Naxxramas a little more, so I think the meta's going to change quite a bit. I think I'm most excited about the Shaman, because now they have Ancestral Healing, Rebirth, and Ancestral Spirit, I think it's, it's called. Those, those, the, those three cards that completely revives or heals above their like regular health, um, the minions. So, if Shaman could have make a deck and stick with those and abuse those that rattles as well as the cards that are already out there. Things like Injured Blade Master into Circle of Healing Combo will make it 3-7 using two cards was only, wait, 4-7 um, was yeah. only from Priest. Now Shamans can do that without too much fallback. At, at the moment I just don't see that card don't see that combo being too useful because you get those combo ways too slow. Yeah. Um, yeah, there are not that many cards that combo. So basically, you have Ancestor Spirit and then Ancestor Healing, which is just a four and combos with only a few cards. But once Nuxtormers come out, it's going to be a lot more um, super hyped to bring Shaman back to life, hopefully. Nice, nice. Uh, do you think that the Miracle Rogue style will still be as strong uh, once all the Nax cards are available? No. Um, main reason, there are quite a few cards, I think, that I can think of that hard counters Miracle Rogue. Mm -hmm. So Miracle Rogue is not going to be a tough lull because once everyone starts, like, the problem with the things like the Mage and Handlock is that counters were clear. So when Miracle Rogue took over, those counter decks also took over. Like, just give an example such as Handbox the Mage. But then because those clear, those counters were so clear, the counter to the, that deck also became popular. Um, so it's basically cycling mana. However, yeah. once Noxramas come out, just it's not just a single or one themed deck that counters a rogue or a yeah, miracle rogue, but it's just a single card or two just can counter the entire deck. Which Everyone can just kind of take, ah, I can take this deck just in case people run this. Mm -hmm. It's like Big Game Hunter. Yeah. Um, so I think there, are, I think the Miracle Rogues are going to fall quite fast, especially with the release of a Spectral Knight because a trade interface Spectral Knight. What do you do against that with a Miracle Rogue? Nothing, you die. <laughs> yep, you basically have to go for Ben Cleef and hope that he, your opponent doesn't have Silence yeah. or Big Game Hunter. Mm. Yep. Uh I've asked this question because um, Reels the other week uh, brought up a really interesting point. Like, I know, like, seeing Lothab, I was like, yeah, Miracle Rogues, they're pretty much gone the way of the Dodo. But he brought up a point where um, the tank, the sorry, the heavy taunt style Druid actually was still popular, even though a lot of people would run uh, Black Knight. So he brought up that there might be a possibility where a similar situation is that, sure, you've got Black Knight, but I can still kind of beat you. So maybe the situation would arise with Miracle Rogues. Like, sure, you have Lotha, but I can still kind of beat you. So that was the only reason I brought it up. 
that was the well there are actually more than one like black knight and silence kind of bits because mm -hmm. ancient of word loses five health and um, mark of the well kind of loses the purpose things like that um but like i said like it's it's not just one card that's going to come out that counters america rogue it's lotha it's a spectral knight it's uh poison seeds mm -hmm. like there are there are a lot more cards that people just can put in in their deck besides the black knight to counter just yeah. one thing so i think that's why america rogues are gonna slowly fall i mean they're they're still gonna be i think they're still gonna be around at least they're around for it after first week release mm. but i don't think they'll be as fallful yeah it won't be like miracle rogues everywhere situation which we kind nope. of have right now i um, mean if, if they get too strong people are just gonna start running trade with a spectral knight yeah. and poison seeds how do you beat that as an Rogue? Mm. if i can see i can kind of see how they would beat it but then you have to like alter your deck to beat those decks so yeah it comes down to like player skill at the end of the day like um whether they've built something that is kind of a miracle but you can maneuver around mm -hmm. your opponent's deck so yeah, yeah. I, I guess that's where the skill factor comes in um all right, moving on to another question. Uh, are you satisfied at the rate which Blizzard are going about balancing the game? Um, well, you mean with the Noxtramas, or...? Well, just general balancing, like, since the game has actually been released. I am happy with that they're trying not to change too much. They're trying to let the players come up with their solutions, but there are sometimes the solution is just too easy to think of, um, or to jump to think of, like, solutions are clear, but you can't really do that. Yeah. Because it's not practical, such as playing only Freeze Mage against Mirka Rogue, um, which, or, uh, that kind of worked for a few players, I suppose, but I don't think any of those players got to top level except, like, one or two. I think they could make a use of the player's opinion a little bit more, a little bit faster than they're doing right now because if you think about the the hunter what happened to hunter yeah what they did was hardcore nerf on mid-range hunter which are countered the pretty much all the other deck but mirka rogue but by that time they implemented the change mirka rogue already was one of the strongest deck like 10 out of the top 20 players were already playing mirka rogue to mm -hmm. counter those hunter decks so I think the implementation of the, the patch was slightly delayed than it needed to be, or they just need to do something else. Um, and a lot of patches were like that, I think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so do you think that they should I, I, like I like the direction effort? they're going. I just don't like the speed and tempo they're taking. Uh, do you think that maybe they should make an effort to like contact maybe not individual players, but maybe like team management, so they can sit down with the group and like just talk, and you know, s uh, get some suggestions in, and possibly may go forward into balancing. They could always make a use of players' opinion or team managers' opinion about the things, but team managers aren't typically the one who will have those opinions in fact those top players on that i mean in fact those managers will try to hide those decks mm -hmm. a very good example miracle rogue they a lot of people tried to hide that deck when the hunter was a very popular the only hunter was being spotlighted yeah. and brought up and down to justice it's like oh my god this deck so be it it's <laughs> everything but like miracle was clear counter miracle rogue was clear counter and players who been abusing that did not reveal that mm -hmm. Um, so I think they could make a uh, little bit of close pay attention, a little more like close up view on what players are actually playing, and maybe they can. I mean, they hold those statistics. They, I'm sure they can figure out. They just didn't look close enough in time. Yeah, yeah. Soon trademark. Uh, yeah. Moving on to the next question. Do you like the way that mm -hmm. Blizzard plan uh, to release Naxxermas and possibly even future um, expansions with the whole weekly basis? Oh my god. I actually don't like the weekly basis thing because uh, if you, you if you re release a patch over six weeks, it, like people who've been practicing those other decks before that meta 
fall into huge, I don't know, like they, they just feel lost for six weeks because meta changes every week. And even if you figure out the meta in a week, a lot of players will, will realize, oh, this deck is pretty good according to this play card set. But then after a week, everything changes. Hmm. Things like that, I don't quite like in as far as competitive thing goes. But I guess in, as far as competitive thing goes, they can limit cards. It's like, all right, the, this cards are coming out next week, you can use the those cards that came out last week, things like that the player tournament managers can do. Or, or Blizzard can enforce the tournaments to do it. So I guess it's not the worst thing. Okay. Uh, I, I do like I do like the idea of hyping up the patch, but yeah. I think the the I think the hype is already there when you release the patch. Uh, especially when it's not as big of a patch like an extra mm -hmm. made thirty card. Compared to other TCG, I'm comparing it's Hearthstone is obviously different, but mm. other TCGs release like the entire set of cards, entire box of cards yeah. every half an year or every quarter. Yeah. So. Uh, do you think that maybe they should uh, speed up their expansion release time to maybe quarterly instead of semi annually? Quarterly, wait, did they say that they're going to do well, it semi-annually? If they do it semi-annually, well, currently the um, Naxxram is released, I believe, six months after uh, the game came out of beta. And uh, there's a lot of rumors flying around that it might be semi-annually. Mm -hmm. Or it possibly could be like one adventure mode a year and then semi-annually they might add cards. But this is, of course, all speculation. Uh, do you, which... Um, which which would you prefer? Would you prefer it like quarterly, just purely for cards? I'm not talking adventure mode. I would definitely pre prefer a slower pace, at least first couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, the one of the one of the things Blizzard definitely is avoiding is to just push away the new viewers. It's like all the incoming viewers just know so much about the game before they can even start playing it at decent level. And when I say decent level, it's like, I don't know, like every average level, let's say not decent level in other TCG that, and then Blizzard is clearly avoiding that. And they're just trying to avoid, um, they're trying to clearly explain everything, what's going on, yeah. every mechanic they're trying to explain. They're trying to make the game new friendly, new player yeah. friendly. So I think having expansion released every quarter would go completely go against that, and I agree with the Blizzard. Like the, the at least because it's an online game, and mm -hmm. you can release a set of expansion, so like next round, so you can add like twenty to thirty sets of cards and have a play mode, story mode, mm -hmm. and let the people enjoy the the story and the effort that Blizzard put into the game a little more. Besides this hardcore competitive, yeah, I, I bit the stack, I countered the stack with the new expansion and then things like that can get a little old after a little while. And I don't want I don't want Hearthstone to go in that zone yet. All right. Um, let's talk about game features really quickly. Uh, if you could add a feature or mechanic to the game in general, uh, what would it uh, be and do? Can I say more than one? Sure. Replay play mode. Okay. And, and so that um, you can actually start reviewing other people's replays. Mm. And of course... Um, and make a discussion over those. Uh, this question is like um, exclusive of Spectator because that's already kind of been announced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, replay yeah, mode. Yeah, I mean, I'm talking about replay mode, not the necessary yeah, yeah. Spectator mode. Because they... Wait, did they officially announce the, the release date or something on Spectator no, mode? No, no. It's a soon trademark. I remember there's they said that all right we are gonna get to those kind of things after once everything settles down and then that yeah. was like a year ago. Yeah. <laughs> so hasn't settled said, down. We're yeah. gonna do the iPad first and then we're gonna do the next Ramos first and then they're gonna do uh, like I don't know when they're exactly gonna do it, yeah. but I, I really wish that would happen. Spectator mode, replay mode, whatever you wish to call it. Um, I think they're kind of s serve a similar purpose if not the same. Well, the replay mode is better, I think, mm -hmm. but there are some dangers in replay mode because people can 
I did replace. Anyhow, um, besides those, I really wish I can tell, or I could. I really wish I can look at the data on Hearthstone, like who's the current top player, who's the top like rank sixteen players at, mm. on the on the ladder, or uh, how well I've been doing on ladder, how many games I won, how many games I lost. So all those stats are hidden from players. I know. I know Blizzard has has been experimenting with. Oh my God, let's hide the the some of the stats so that people can enjoy a game a little more. But I wish there were at least one way or another that people can see things. At least a little bit of data, just just this much, so that I can get a vague idea where it's going, mm-hmm. not just be in completely blind mode except for my rank. Yeah, yeah. Like Strife Crew brought this up as well, where it's like a real time top maybe 200 or so and apparently the only go like the only way around this is to actually add people onto your list and that way you could see kind of the real time ranking but it's not yeah. really practical so come on blizzard you did it in starcraft we know the technology is <laughs> there don't make this like lan come on mm. yeah so yeah um, uh, adding all those players are quite impractical since you only have a 100 friend list you have available and you p- probably have to add about 500 players to make it a good sample. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's not even like, uh, what's it called? A lot of people are thinking, oh, it's just 500 players. Like, they're probably, what? How many players are there estimated in Legendaries? Like, right now or yeah, pr- like at the right end of the season? Like right now, like a ballpark I've, figure. I have no idea. I... Well, I got back from Shenzhen and then I started playing on the other servers because... Until now, I've been hitting Legendary on all three servers, at mm-hmm. least past couple of seasons, and I had a lot of events going on this month, mm-hmm. um, so I wasn't able to quite do that, so I'm trying to do that now, so I'm not quite aware of how many Legendaries are there. Mm-hmm. However, I do know there are more than 1,000 Legendaries in NA right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, Blizzard, please fix. Moving on to the next question. Uh, let's talk about the spectator mode really quickly. Uh, do you think that there might be an important tool that should be added to the spectator mode, like something like in, uh, I don't know, a feature that can calculate odds, like in poker? Ooh, I don't know if those are necessary, to be honest, because to be able to do that, you have to be able to tell how many cards are, what like what exactly cards of cards that card pool you have before going into the game. Right? Like, yep. hey, what are the odds of you drawing swipe? I mean, obviously, you're going to use two, but if it's a starfall, like, you have to know, or, like, to be able to just search for them, you have to know that card exists in the decks, which can spoil. Um, to be honest, I just, I'll just be happy with the, them releasing replay or spectator mode. Replay. Mm-hmm. Pretty cool. Uh, some of my guests also commented, like, you know the, the sidebar which shows you which cards have been played, which card attacked what? Uh, they said something that can let you scroll up and down that. By the way, adding yeah. to that, I really wish they would show a discarded card upon bursting your hand. Uh, yes. You have no way of tracking that unless you memorize the cards by the mm-hmm. time you sit. And as I'm, I'm not saying this is that everyone has this problem, but as a streamer, who uses one monitor? I I don't look at my opponent hand or my hand when I'm not on play. Mm. I just look at my chat. So, <laughs> like whenever whenever oh wait he lost a card I just see the effect going out. Of, what what card did he lose? What card did I lose? <laughs> uh, I yeah. wish I had I wish I had that. They added for Soul Fire and other cards. So why can't they show? Like it shows anyways. Why can't yep. they add it on history? Yeah. It'll you, sir, nice. need to get more monitors. Come on. Ah. Scrub stream. I mean, even if monitor. I don't, even if I get two monitors, it's, I'm going to have the same problem because yeah. I'll be just staring at the chat most of the time. Yeah. I like, I don't know, I like talking to my viewers. Yeah, man. Twitch chat, best chat, homie. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving into uh, constructed card building really quickly. Uh, what do you think is key for any newbie joining the game? Good deck building or understanding of the game? It's hard to build a deck without understanding the game first. So, um, what you can try is to understand it. Well, like, wait, when you say new players, you mean like a completely new player who just opened the door? or Yeah, it's like literally he was born yesterday and now he's playing mm. Redstone. 
understand the game, understand the mechanic other than cards first is, I would say, most important. Because mm. a lot of players, I'm sure, have no idea what Battle Cry, Death Rattle, what, mm. um, like, there, when I when I first learned Hearthstone, there a lot of niche things that I just had to learn by, by experience. It's not clear it's being explained. Such as that girl is like I attack into Wind Runner, Sylvanas Wind Runner Runner with a Cairn, then you don't lose a Cairn at the moment. Although Blizzard say they're going to change it. However, at the moment, they don't. Um, they, so things like that, you're. Well, if a Cairn dies at the same time, that is, by the way. Um, so things like that, you just have to learn by experience. And. You're just gonna have to learn those before being able to construct a good deck, mechanics, and then the card plays. Yes, the game cards. All right. Uh, moving on to my next question. This is a question that's asked a lot by new players, and mm -hmm. uh, it's of course about which legendary should be crafted first. So. Ooh, I always tell this to my streamers. I mean, when I on stream. So for rush decks, obviously you want Leroy because you want that six damage burst or twelve damage, or twelve damage or ten damage burst with whatever combo cards you have. However, for mid range decks, I definitely recommend Thomas. I think Thomas is the most at the moment um, before next month's release. By the way, it's everything after next month could be changed. Mm -hmm. I think for mid range decks, Thomas is by far the strongest. I mean, the strongest. Legendary out there who mid range decks that uses spells that is that uses more than four spells, such as a druid. It's pretty cool, you know. Interesting, and obviously, is, if yeah. you are playing late game card, late game decks, you're not gonna have the hey, what, what first legendary should I craft for this deck that costed 30,000 dust? <laughs> no, you're not gonna have that, so yeah, that's where I stand. All right, that's really interesting, actually. Sorry like, about cutting you off. But... No, 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 it's perfectly <laughs> fine, man. So it depends about you, bro. All right. Yeah. yeah. Um, interesting point, though, is that um, for the first maybe five episodes, I'm gonna say, all of my guests, the first card that they just brought up was just Leroy Jenkins. Everybody. Oh. Then Strife okay. Crow and Raynad were like Thalnos. and then last week Ooh. it uh, Real said that uh, Leroy for aggro. Talnos for balance and Ragnaros for like game control decks. So yeah, but you're not gonna have those late game control deck cards, right? Yeah, yeah, eh. exactly. So I just find it's really interesting thing. I, I'm really curious to see like whether uh, uh, you know the new card which just released the legendary at Nax. Oh, well, yes. although actually you don't need uh, 1600 dust, but maybe once the like the next. Nax cards are released, the legendaries. So, are there any legendaries, by the way, at uh, Nax that you have to craft? I'm not quite sure. Wait, you have to craft? No, no, no. All the cards are given throughout oh, the, okay. the play mode. Okay. Then Every I, single card are given. Then maybe, like, yeah. the, um, like, one of the old legendaries might come in. Like, you never know. Maybe Melhouse will become, like, the next broken <laughs> card. <laughs> Like, maybe that's the way that uh, Miracle Rogues will counter it. It's like, oh, you've got a low tab? Here is a mill house. Deal with it. <laughs> so, might see that coming into it. Yeah. Um, you, you know how those two interact, right? By the way, right? Uh, not really. Like, how does it react? Okay, so if if you cast mill house first and then low tab first, every single card's spell will cost five mana because okay. they become zero first and then five. Okay. Because they say to set the card mana cost yeah. or spell cost to zero or five. And if you do it the other way around, you play the meal house a second, every card costs a zero anyways, because it's a set to zero when yeah. you play it. Um old legendaries. What I can tell is that this is one of the things I brought up earlier. Like the um, I think Karen and Windrunner, which yeah, has yeah. a very strong death rattle also ready in the game, will shine more because those reuse death rattle effects on Naxxramas are gonna make them stronger. Mm. Just by their nature. Like cards like Rebird, Poison Seeds, always activate those. I actually don't know if uh, Poison Seeds will trigger... I actually don't know how the, the, the Poison Seeds and Windrunner works. I'd like to test it out. I, I have yet to see it. All this and more next week on Next mm. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, are there any other tips that you'd like to give beginners? 
ooh, beginners. I, um, this is what I always tell to my peers. But first of all, finish all your beginner quests, which are bring all your hero level up to 10 and beat all the difficult AI. I don't know if they're called the difficult or medium AI. Like thing. expert or something. Oh, expert. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's expert. Um, in Asian server, it's like medium AI. I don't oh, know why. Yeah. There's no hard. <laughs> hmm. Anyhow. Um, and after that, you get your first arena for free. Um, and by, by the time you play those, you're going to have like four or 500 gold dead. You should be able to do five to six arena for free at start. And I want you to use those very volubly. But it means that you probably want to look at, look, study a little how arena is going to go out for you, what cards you should be picking, because you probably have no idea what cards are actually good yet. Um, even if you've played like 20, 30 games so far, you probably have some, some idea of what cards are kind of good, what cards are kind of bad, but you're probably going to have no idea yeah, what cards are, where exactly they should be at. Mm -hmm. So you could try to read or just watch the streamers out there who plays the arena at high level, such as Trump, me, both from Team, mm -hmm. <laughs> team Solomid. Oh, that uh, shameless plug <laughs> <laughs> or, or Hafu. Um, she's also a very good, very yeah. talented arena player as well. I think those three were the three basically like last arena players. Um, when the scene tried to move the competitive scene, like those three were, including myself, was still playing Arena. Mm -hmm. um, anyhow, so if you do your homework, or even if you don't do it, like you can just try it how it feels. Um, don't feel, don't feel afraid. Yeah, don't be afraid of losing gold on those because that's that's gonna teach you a very valuable lesson for each gold you you use. Not to mention, you only have to even out, like you have to go three and three. Three wins, three loss to mm -hmm. even out. Since you're spending 150 gold for a card pack in an arena. Yeah. And it costs 100 gold to buy a pack anyway, so you only have to make 50 gold worth back. Yeah. Okay. Uh, moving on to another question. This is, of course, mainly about the cards in the game. If you could make a card, be it a legendary minion spell or secret, what would it be and what would it do? Can I make literally anything? Anything, man. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I wish there was a card that just auto wins the game upon conditions are met. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, there's a not like auto win, but similar card in next round. It's like if you, I don't know if you if those cards are playable, but all three are legendary. Um, you play two cards, and then if both of the, those two die in the game, you play the Thaddeus, which is, is 10 mana costing 11-11. But I wish there were, there were more cards like that, just bring some a little bit more above, about the price factor. Not necessarily very, very strong. Like when I say auto win, I, I meant to say cards like Exodia, you have to, in that's from Yukio, uh, mm -hmm. you basically have to collect Exodia's head, Exodia's arms, oh, and Exodia's right. legs. Yeah. So five cards out of your like 30 yeah, cards. Yeah, it becomes that, like a transformer. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you auto win the game. Obviously, it's a little different in Hearthstone yeah. because it's a, it's a lot slower than Yu-Gi-Oh, I think. Mm -hmm. So basically, you'll have to, I don't know, collect seven <laughs> cards out of your deck and then auto win the game. <laughs> uh, uh, that'll be kind of dumb, actually, in competitive sin. But you will have to make, to make that... To balance... The, that you have to make those very, you have to set those standards very, very high to, to yeah. meet the condition. But I wish there were a little bit more of a surprising factor. It's like, oh my god, he can do that? Mm. Things like that. Just keep the fun going. Yeah, it's like, so the comment users will be like, oh my god, I've only heard legends of this. <laughs> Never have I seen yes. this. <laughs> Yeah, that would also uh, make some it's interesting. It's a miracle! Oh my god! <laughs> and it's like suddenly from heaven, like an angel comes down and then kills yeah. the guy's opponent, and he gets the instant win <laughs> <laughs> with a hollow head. Yeah, everybody will ignore the fact that somebody just died, so it's all good. <laughs> all right, moving on to a question. I've asked this to some of my guests. Um, would you ever consider doing charity streams? I have. Um, I don't. 
I mean, I haven't really found a good opportunity to do it, but once the opportunity arises, I will definitely try it. I don't know if it's anything against my, well, against the policy of my team. I don't think it is, but I, I do want to try it. You better call definitely. your manager, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's all good. All right, now moving on to the final question of today. What is Ooh. the future for Masan? Future of Masan? Well, what I dream of or what realistic future is for Masan, you're asking? Uh, let's have both. Oh, man. Um, my dream future is to have this job for next 15, 20 years and have a solid fan base that I have entertained thus far and just have the memory like it's gonna be a precious memory once I leave this field or like once in a while like one at some point I'm gonna have to leave this in I want to delay that as much as possible if I can I wish I can retire in this scene okay and be happy with that and more of a realistic goal would be I stay in this field for next five Five to ten years and be hired by some sort of manager uh, for promotions, I suppose. That I guess that's like realistic, more realistic, or what's happening for, for a lot of other esport stars or mm. streamers mainly. Yep. All right. Uh, I think those we'll are it. All right, this is uh, the end of the show. Are there any shout-outs you'd like to give? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, big shout-out to my team, Team TSN, <laughs> for picking me and Team Trump, well, Trump up, as well as its sponsors, HyperX, the Logitech, as well as... Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, my God. Wait, 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 I wait, am wait, so wait. not editing this bit out of the interview. It's all... Uh, <laughs> Logitech, HyperX, and Alienware. That's yeah. It. You, you, you cheated, I, I though. Remember <laughs> you cheated. Yeah. No, no, I didn't cheat it. All right. Um, I, I haven't remembered them because they haven't sent me those precious computer that I want to okay. post about and put in my stream. All right. Um, I hope they will do it in the near future. Yeah, their their headsets and their gears are awesome, man. Mm. Like, I've been on this field for... I've been u using these gears for 10, 15 years. I've yep. been using, like, all sort of company's products and mm -hmm. I'm very happy with their products as well as where they're headed with the nice. sponsorships. Nice. So big shout out to them as well as my stream, the the twitch.tv slash my son SC. Nice. You I'm trying to make the do you mind if I do those personal go, go, go ahead, promotions go ahead. as well? Yeah, it's fine. So I'm trying to make like daily videos on YouTube as well. I'm trying to promote them, although I'm not doing a good job of <laughs> it. That's <laughs> and anything anything outside of stream, you can follow me at twitter.com slash masanesc yeah. for any news, any anything that's going on. Yep. Alright. Uh, is, that is that a sexy TSM shirt you're wearing? Yes, it's uh, TSM Season 4 shirt. Nice. Uh, I actually wish they were brighter, or I wish they were a little more eligible. Yeah. Like TSM logo that is, but I feel like if they I did. I think they made a good design of it. Yeah. Still, because if you make these more brighter or more distinctive, they're gonna look ugly. Yeah. I think. I think it's in a good place. <sighs> All right. But uh, I wish it was more visible. Yeah. It's like, hey guys, I'm wearing a TSM shirt. <laughs> I can't do that. Oh, it's like man. what? What? We can't see it. <laughs> oh yeah. Also, I wish there was some sun at the back of my shirt. Soon Unfortunately, they don't have those. Yeah. They don't Patrick's have a uh, personal shirts yet. Mm. Hopefully they're coming. Yeah. Or I can just put it in my own. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. They will, they will look ridiculous. That do it so yourself shirt. Put it on the whites. M A. <laughs> oh, wait, I ran out of space. Sun. Oh my goodness. At the bottom. Well played. Um, all right. Um, hey, if you guys enjoyed the interview, do follow us at OnGamers Twitter. Uh, which is at ongamers underscore com. Do follow us on facebook.com forward slash ongamers com. And do follow me at the Michigan on Twitter. So, Masan, you have been well met. All right. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me. I hope you have a wonderful 
rest of the day is all the viewers and you. And thanks for well meeting me. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, you have been well met. You make it sound so dirty, though. God damn it. <laughs> it is. Uh, uh, when the, whenever audiences say it sounds so dirty, <laughs> look, I'm, I'm so dirty. I'm going to put you down to the mud and we're going to have a fight there. All, all on t shirts and underwears. Let's go. Do it. And then. <laughs> I don't know where we're going with this, but. Okay! <laughs> It's, so yeah, I, man. I was talking about those aggressive pilots <laughs> who says, "Well, man," and they just rush you down. Yeah, to try to have a fight. <laughs> oh my god, those decks are hideous. But all right, thanks for having yep. me. Yep. Till next time, guys. Well met.